Welcome to part 3 of our Dying Light to Stay Human Developer Tools Guide. In this video, we'll explain how the environmental and dynamic lighting work. Let's start with the building I prepared by using objects from Prefab Browser. I'll need to make some lighting for it. As you can see, the lighting inside isn't working quite well. It doesn't match the lighting outside. Also, inside we have some lights on the ceiling, which we want to get rid of. To fix that, we're going to use environmental lighting and place some ENV probes. They're static and pre-calculated lights that help you recreate the physics-based lighting from dying light. To be more precise, ENV probes are probes that collect data from the environment and use them to generate lighting on other objects in the area. To place a fresh new ENV probe to fix that problem with the light inside the building, jump to Prefab Browser. Now let's choose the Class category. Here in the search bar, write Roombox. Roombox is an ENV probe for the interior. Select this Roombox and place it somewhere inside. Notice how you now have a different lighting area for this ENV probe. By default, the ENV probe room boxes are lighted up or colored so it's easier to place it and see its range. Now we need to copy the coordinates of the building and paste it to our own box. Thanks to this, it will have the same rotation. I will not accidentally go outside the building. Let's click Escape and now let's jump to the scene window. Now let's select our building, jump to Attributes and click Copy Matrix. Now let's jump to Scene Select our room box, go to Attributes, and now paste our attributes. The rotation and position of our room box has changed. Let's switch world to local, so to edit the room box in relation to itself and not to the world. Now, by using the transform tools you already learned, let's transform this room box to cover the whole interior. Remember that it should cover just the inside and not the outside walls. Let's move it up. As you can see, the floor is affected by our room box. Let's choose Scale by Extents. Hold Ctrl and move to the end of the room where we're going to see that the wall is affected by our room box. Let's do it with the left side and also the right side. Now let's move the top wall. And now let's move the bottom one. Zoom out a little Select the front wall and scale it up to cover around half of the doorframe. Let's choose the selection tool and click Escape. The lighting looks different but it's still not quite right. We need to add another ENV probe to help blend the outside world with our interior. To do that, let's jump to Prefab Browser. Let's write ENV probe in our search bar. Click on ENV probe and now place it on our map. Click selection tool as before. Now we need to paste the building coordinates we copied before the ENV probe. Thanks to this, we'll have the same rotation and will not accidentally go outside the building. Go to Attributes and paste our matrix. Now let's transform our ENV probe to fit our door frame. Remember, just inside walls, not outside ones. Let's use Scale by Extents once more. And now, as you can see, we created an ENV probe to cover just the door frame. Let's rename it to ENV Probe Door. And let's extend the ENV Probe category and attributes. Now to activate blending, let's click the checkbox on blending to enable. To better see our change, let's change the time to night. Let's uncheck blending and check it once again. Hopefully, you can see how the lighting has expanded to the front walls. That means it's working. After that change, let's save our prefab. Go to the Scene window, click the right mouse button, click Save and Reload. Now let's open this one more time. Open and set as target and just select our room box. As you can see, the lighting is still wrong. For the ENV probes to take effect, first you need to generate it. In our case, we have two ENV probes. The first one for the door frame with the blending option and the second one from the room. We just need to generate our room box because ENV probes with blending enabled don't require for us to build them. Let's select our room box and click Validate and Build. Now let's choose Generate ENV Probes. Choose Selected Grids only because we want to calculate just one room box. If you want to generate all ENV probes in the future on your new map, deselect this option. Let's click Generate. Now you can see a difference. Choose Selection Mode and let's save our prefab. Right mouse click, then Save and Reload. Let's also save our level. Collapse it. Our environmental lighting seems to be working. We generate our insides so the lighting looks okay. Let's now change the time to daytime. 
As you can see, the inside is black. When we fly it inside, we will no longer see the weird lighting effect on our ceiling. And now everything looks okay. Now you know how environmental lighting works. Let's talk now about dynamic lights. To show how dynamic light works, we can create an induced lamp. Let's jump to the prefab browser window and choose classes, meaning prefabs with logic. Now in the search bar, write lamp prefab. Choose lamp prefab. And now maybe zoom out a little and place it somewhere on the wall. Now let's click the selection option and jump to the attributes window. In the attributes window, next to lamp preset, click these three dots. Now let's write industrial and choose PRP lamp industrial A cold. Click OK. Now when we zoom in, you can see the lamp appear. It's visible now. Let's hold control and move it a little to align it to the object. And by using rotation attributes, let's add 9 before that. Rotate it and place it where you want to have that lamp. Maybe above our door frame should be okay. Check how it looks. And move it a little to the front. Now it should look okay. Let's zoom out a little and now we have our lamp. Let's change the time to night time so that we can see our lamp a bit better. As you can see we have a lamp but we don't have any lights. Let's jump to the prefab browser window and choose the light category. Now in the search bar, let's write Omni. Let's choose Omni and place it around our lamp. Let's choose Selection Tool. It's an omnidirectional light, so it's beaming out from all sides of the object. Open the Attributes window and rename it to Cold Lamp Omni. If you want to change its color or intensity, you can do that in the light category. Let's expand our light category and by clicking on color, we can change its color to a colder one. A live preview appeared, so it should be easier to pick the correct color. When we picked our color, let's click OK. Set the intensity to 1.5. You can also change its position, rotation or increase the range of light by simply scaling it up, like any other object. By using transform tools, let's scale up this Omni and move it a little. You can also change the attenuation and attributes to have a better fade to black. Let's change it to 2. Remember that omnidirectional lights don't cast any shadows. To make our lamp more realistic, we need directional light of the spot type. So let's jump to the prefab browser and write spot in the search bar. As you can see, we have various types of spotlights. The one we need is called spot shadows. Let's choose our spot shadow and place it on our map. Let's choose the selection tool. By using transform tools, let's change its position, rotation and scale to fit our lamp. So let's rotate it a little, slightly down, scale icon and make the range bigger. Something like this should be okay. Now let's choose the selection tool. Just like in the case of Omni lights, you can also change the color, intensity and more in the attributes window. Before jumping there, let's jump to the scene window and select our Omni. Let's click scene and select our Omni lamp. Click attributes and in attributes go to our color. Select color hex, press Control C on your keyboard and click OK. Now let's open the scene window once more. Select our spotlight and open the attributes window. Now let's name it Cold Lamp Spot. And by clicking on color and selecting the existing hex, and by pressing the Control V, we can paste our color from the Omni light and click OK. Let's also change the intensity to 1.5 and change attenuation to maybe 2. Contrary to Omni lights, spot type lights can cast shadows. If you want a shadow, you also need an object to block the light. A simple chair will do in this example. Jump to the prefab browser window. Choose the single mesh category and in the search bar let's write chair. Choose one of them and move it to our map. Place it. Choose the selection tool. Rotate it a little. Let's zoom in a little and now as you can see we have a shadow below our chair. Zoom out to see the entire building. Now when I'm going to change the time of the day, you can see that the light is still visible. So the light will not disappear in daytime. We can change the properties of the lamp to activate this lamp only at night. Let's open the scene window and select our lamp. 
Now let's jump to attributes and let's expand lamp properties. First, we need to parent our lights with this lamp. To do that, next to external lights, let's click the plus icon. Let's click these three dots next to the zero name and choose cold lamp spot. As you can see, we can parent our lights with this lamp. Now let's click OK. In active daytime, you can click on this, deselect all of the times and just leave night. Now when I'm going to change the time, the light will be visible only at night time. At a different time of the day, the light is not visible. To make this lamp more realistic, let's delete our Omni light. So I'm going to click this minus icon next to Omni to delete it. Jump to the scene window and delete our Omni. So now we're going to have just the spotlight. Let's select our lamp once more and jump to attributes. You can add flickering to the lights. Next to the flicker name, click the three dots and here let's write flicker shop. Let's choose the one that's going to appear and click OK. As you can see, flickering is working. Now when I'm going to change the time, the light will go off and the night will go on. Apart from going on, we also have this flickering. Now let's jump to the scene window, select our light with this lamp, click the right mouse button to create a prefab and name it Lamp Outside 2 maybe. Let's click Save. Now I'm going to open the prefab for the building I created, open and set as target, and by clicking and holding and moving our lamp, I'm going to add it to my building. Now let's save and reload. As we talked about in the previous part, by adding the object to the level category, they're going to be visible in our game. Last, but not least, after adding new light and generating ENV probes, or if this is a fresh new map, it's recommended to build height maps for the whole of your map. After that, all lights should behave properly. To do that, you can click Validate and Build and choose the Build. Now in this window, let's select only height maps and click OK. There's also one more option. Let's close this window. Click OK and now let's jump to the right down lower corner of your screen. Here, as you can see, we have a button called Needs Build. Sometimes this button will also be called Ready to Play. To build height maps, let's click on this button, choose as before height maps and click OK. We successfully generated our height maps. Let's click OK and let's test how it looks in our game. Let's click the Play icon and click Yes to save our progress. Now, as you can see, our building is visible and the lamp is disabled during the daytime. Also, when I go into the interior, the lights here behave properly. We don't have this weird light on the ceiling. Let's move outside and let's wait for the night to check if the light is working. It looks like everything is working at nighttime. Our lamp will be activated, as we can see now. And that's all for part 3. In the next video, we'll demonstrate tools for editing terrain. Thanks for watching.